Retiring early is not for everybody. In fact, it's probably not a match for most people. But if it's something that you think you want to do, if you're in your 50s or 60s, this is your go time. And so I'm going to take you a little outside of your comfort zone in today's video. And hopefully this, this beautiful sunset back here will make it a little less jarring as we have this conversation. Okay, so if you're thinking you want to retire early, you're, you're in a very esteemed uh, position. Very few people get to retire in their 50s and 60s. In fact, the U.S. Census would tell us only about 16, 17% of people are retired in the age group between 50 and 60. And the vast, vast majority of those are in the 55 to 60 uh, year old. That's 13% of the 16. And just 3% three, 3 uh, are retired in the 50 to 54. But if you think it can make, make the numbers work in your 50 to 54, uh, you know, you're in this esteemed uh, area and, and there's a lot of us that are gonna be envious in a good way uh, of you, but you really do have to make the decision. This is your now or never point. This is your go time. And I just want to remind all of us of it, right? So let, let's go through the math. And uh, what I want to do is, is stick on this, should you think about doing it? And then we'll go into some of the numbers and some of the things that I think you need to look at. Okay, so some more uh, stats about Americans. One in six Americans right now are over age 65, 16.9% as of 2020. And believe it or not, by 2030, all of us baby boomers, and many of my viewers are baby boomers, by 2030, all the baby, baby boomers are gonna be age 65 or older, right? And, and by then, it's kind of too late to think about retiring early. Uh, in fact, the, the average American today anticipates that they're going to retire at 67 years old, right? And, and most people retire a little bit before that. 30% of people uh, are forced to retire. Basically, their company saying, <clears throat> you know, your time has come and gone and it's time for you to think about retiring. They're forced out. Uh, another 30% have to retire because of health issues. And... You know, for me personally, if I'm going to be forced out, I'd rather leave on my terms, right? So, so this is our go time. This is your go time. And it's time to think about, does it make sense for you or not? So, so let's jump into some of the numbers. And at the end, I'm going to talk about the most important income stream for all retirees in the United States. So please, please stay to the end because super important information. And as long as I'm talking about this kind of stuff, uh, do me a favor, hit the like button. It really does help the YouTube algorithm find other viewers that this, this video and my videos can be helpful. Okay, so let's start with, you know, what, what do the numbers likely look like, right? And, and so we've got regular viewers of my channel know, Bill Bangin's 4% withdrawal rule. Anybody thinking of retiring early has probably come across the 4% rule. And that's for a, essentially a 50-50 portfolio of US large cap companies and, and intermediate bonds, in, intermediate treasuries, I should say. Um, and that, that says if you withdraw 4%, according to Bill Bengen's study, um, that money has a very, very high likelihood, like 97% plus, of lasting 30 years with that withdrawal rate. Now you need to know there's really smart people out there that are saying that rule doesn't apply anymore. Uh, and, and they think you'll run out of money, right? But do they have a crystal ball? I don't know, maybe they do. I don't have a crystal ball, but know that. And then also know that the, the uh, father of the 4% rule, the person that came up with the initial study, Bill Bengen, uh, initially, his money was in that allocation. Um, but in June, I believe it was of 2022, might have been 2020, uh, he announced that he was moving his portfolio into 70% cash, 20% stocks, and 10% bonds. And he just wanted people to know because a lot of people are using his quote-unquote rule. Um, 
So he was upfront about that. Now, does Bill Bengen have a crystal ball? I don't know, but you know, so what is the right asset allocation number for you? What percent can, I'm, I'm sorry, I should have said, what's the right uh, withdrawal rate for you? Um, and, and is 4% the right number? Well, if you're gonna retire in your 50s and you're in good health, you probably have longer than a 30 year time horizon, right? And Bengen's study was, you know, 97% likelihood of not running out of money within 30 years. So hopefully you're planning on living more than 30 years. So I think you probably need to use a lower withdrawal rate. I should say this is not financial advice. I don't know your situation. Um, and the things I'm talking about here are complex enough that I think it makes sense for you to consider hiring a fee-only financial advisor. You can find one near you just by Googling that term, fee-only financial advisor. Um, and, and my goal here is to put things on your radar screen so you can research it yourself and, and you can do um, your web searches and, and just educate yourself on it. So what, what withdrawal rate might be safe? You know, I, again, I don't know. You know, I haven't done Bill Bengen's work, but probably in three in the three percent range. Again, work with a fee-only financial advisor for your situation, but that's the number that I would probably use. So, you know, the inverse. And so, what that would say is, if you had a million-dollar portfolio, you could take out what thirty thousand dollars a year. If you had a five hundred thousand dollar portfolio. You could take out $15,000 a year and index that every year for inflation. Um, but I like to use the inverse of it. And here's why. And, and so the inverse of 4%, right? One divided by 4% is 25. One divided by 30, let's just call it, one divided by 3%, I'm sorry, is 30 or, or somewhere between 30 and 35. And what I like about what I call a Sewell's rule of 25, a Sewell's rule of 30, a Sewell's rule of 35, is it's just easier. Let's say you say you want to have $30,000 a year coming from your investment accounts, right? Then you could apply the, if you wanted to use a 4% withdrawal rate, you could apply the 25% rule. And if you said 30,000 a year, then the rule of 25 would say you need $750,000. And the rule of 30 or 35 would say you need about a million dollars, right? You take that 30,000 a year, you multiply it by 30, that would give you 900,000. You apply it by 35, and, and believe it or not, I can do the math. Uh, 1,050,000 is, is what the rule of 35 would say if you needed that $30,000. And then every year you would, you would increase that $30,000 in this example by inflation, right? So one thing you have to decide is your withdrawal rates. Uh, the next thing you have to decide is your asset allocation. And your asset allocation is gonna have a huge, huge impact on what kind of withdrawal rate that you can have, right? Likely, you can have a higher withdrawal rate, meaningfully higher, if you're willing to have a higher asset allocation. However, do not change your asset allocation just because you want the higher withdrawal rate because if you do that when the market is scary when the market goes through a correction you're likely to blow out at exactly the wrong time and i don't want that to happen to you that's how people really get hurt in the stock market is getting scared and becoming forced sellers into a down market for whatever reason uh, but it's particularly sad when you become a forced seller just because you know, the emotions and, 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 and your thoughts just, you, you're, it's just too painful intellectually to think, I've lost 40% of my portfolio. I mean, think about that. You know, if you, in this example, if you, you had a million dollars and, and now you're down to $600,000, that's a very, very scary thing for most people. So work with a fee-only financial advisor, figure out the asset allocation that's right for you. You may over time, having this advisor by your side, this river guide with you, you may be comfortable with a higher asset allocation, knowing that you and this advisor have a relationship and, and they're gonna help walk you off the, the, the edge uh, when, when you're scared and thinking you need to blow out of your, your stocks at the wrong time.
right? So that may work. It works for some people. It doesn't work for everybody though. So be careful about being overly aggressive with your asset allocation. Okay, so asset allocation is important. Your withdrawal rate is important. Also thinking about your expenses. You know, if you've said, you know, I really wanna retire between 50 and 60, um, are you willing to lower your expenses? Are you willing to lower your cost of living um, and, and make that happen sooner? Maybe instead of spending $70,000 a year in retirement, are you willing to spend $50,000 to make this happen, right? And there's no right or wrong answer. It's just whatever whatever's right for you. Okay, let's keep, keep going here. It's also super, super important um, that, that you understand your health insurance. If you're a US citizen, you know, most of us get our health insurance, our health care insurance through our employer. And if you're 50 years old, if you're 54 years old, if you're 59, you know, you've, you've got a donut hole until 65 uh, until Medicare comes along. So either make yourself an expert on health care insurance where you can make an educated decision, right? There, there are the uh, Affordable Care Act exchanges now, um, but understand before you make the decision to retire what those options are. So either become an expert yourself or hire somebody that is an expert. For me personally, I'm gonna do the latter, right? I'm, I'm not an expert on healthcare insurance. Uh, and there's just too many unknown unknowns. I don't know what I, what I don't know, right? So I would look up the things that I know to think about, but I need to think about the things I'm not thinking about. And that's one of the ways working with an expert can be helpful. Okay, so we talked about health insurance. The other thing is, do you have any other income streams? Do you have any real estate investments coming in? Do you have a side job that would bring in income on the side to help you retire early? And or are you willing to do that? Are you adaptable? You know, sequence of return risk, which is, God forbid, if you have poor stock market returns in the first couple of years of, re of your retirement, that can be damaging to your portfolio. Actually, two things Bengen found in his study was sequence of return risk and then also high inflation. Right now, we have relatively historically high inflation, certainly compared to what we've had over the last decade, right? Is that gonna continue? We all hope not. I, I, I wish Jerome Powell the best success and the best outcome for all of us is a soft landing and, and hopefully he gets there. But uh, so, so inflation and sequence of return risk, are you adaptable? You know, as humans, we can be adaptable and maybe we say, you know, we wanna retire early, but if we get unlucky and we get poor early returns in the first couple years, okay, we're gonna adjust and maybe we lower our expenses more and or uh, we, we take a part-time job or we start a side hustle, um, you know, freelance some work, whatever, whatever it is, consulting in your area of expertise. Um, and then I, I said at the end there was, you know, the most important source of income for all of us in the United States in retirement, I shouldn't say all of us, most of us, is going to be Social Security. So make sure you understand what retiring early is going to do to your Social Security. I am not a Social Security expert. I'll give you some basics here, but look up this information for yourself and or work with an expert, either a fee-only financial advisor or a lot of accountants know a lot of information about Social Security as well. But so, to qualify for Social Security, you need to have 40 quarters, so 10 years, of where you basically paid into the system and you were making in today's dollars $1,470 a quarter or more. And what Social Security does is they, and this is where I wanna leave it because it gets complex very quickly. What Social Security does is they take your 35 best years uh, highest paying, highest earning years. Uh, and so if you don't have 35 years and you retire early, those are gonna be zeros. Now, there, there are some things that um, minimize the impact of that, but there's going to be an impact and you want to know what that is before you make the decision to retire. So like I said, this is go time. You know, if you're 50 to 60 years old, 
This is your chance to retire early. Be thoughtful, be deliberate, make the decision that's right for you. I'm not saying you should retire early, but I definitely think you should be thoughtful and deliberate and think about how you're going to get the most out of the youth of your senior years. And one way to do that is to watch this video up here where I talk about average retiree income and this video down here where I talk about five reasons to retire as soon as you can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.